maintaining Jehovah's moral standards involves more than just avoiding sex before marriage. Colossians chapter 3 warns against all forms of uncleanness. And that involves things that don't, uh, are, that don't deal with waiting for later, but avoiding entirely, you know, like immoral fantasizing, like pornography, or similar provocative images. So what if a person finds it very difficult to keep away from some of these forms of uncleanness? Let's take pornography as an example, okay? Person finds it very hard to avoid viewing pornography. What can he do? Just more willpower, more fortitude, more determination? Probably not enough. What else does he need? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians 4, starting at verse 3. For this is the will of God, that you should be holy and abstain from sexual immorality. Each one of you should know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not with greedy, uncontrolled sexual passion like the nations have that do not know God. Did you catch that expression? Know how. Know how to control our body and our minds, too. Knowing how, because breaking and remaining free from a vice like pornography often requires knowing how, learning how, learning specific skills and strategies and um, lifestyle changes, new thinking patterns. It involves learning how. And a lot of this is explained in our literature, the publications of the slave. You can find them using the index or the research guide. Edward Algen there, Bethelite from the Warwick headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, giving us all a darn good lesson about porn <laughs> and explaining how the organization's publications, the Jehovah's Witness organization's publications, going back decades, can give you... Spe specific skills and strategies to stop you from viewing porn, apparently. So yes. Well, we're going to look at an example of some of the wisdom from past Watchtower publications shortly. But again, what is it with this obsession with sex? The organisation is obsessed, I think, with policing people's sex lives and policing people's sexuality. Let's be completely honest, and I understand that some of you watching might be asexual. You, you might not have a strong component of your identity that is sexual or any component of your identity that is sexual. The more we learn about human sexuality, the more we learn that it's a very nuanced subject. But if you're not asexual, I think I can safely say that we've all at some point viewed pornography. Or we've all at some point done what he's describing here. The guy is lying, quite frankly, if he's going to suggest that he hasn't at some point viewed porn, assuming he isn't asexual. And that's not to give a blanket endorsement to porn. Obviously, the porn industry is riven with exploitation. You know, that's a whole other subject. But what he's talking about here is any imagery, any imagery whatsoever that is designed to excite people sexually. Let's be honest, stuff that people would masturbate to. And imagery, erotic imagery, goes back right through to ancient times. What's interesting is, nowhere in the Bible does it forbid erotic imagery, which it could easily do if you think about it. It doesn't need to use the word pornography. It just simply needs to say you're not allowed to look at any images, any graven images or any pictures of 
the naked human form. It could easily say that somewhere in the Bible. But interestingly, the Bible writers didn't mention that at all. In fact, if we're going to talk about what the Bible has to say about sex, I think Edward Elgin is being incredibly disingenuous in just singling out the parts where it condemns sexual immorality given how many examples there are in the Bible of utter sexual depravity, in some instances endorsed or even mandated by God. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a thumbnail to a recent video I put out with 25, 25 examples of sexual depravity in the Bible. So it's incredibly misleading to suggest that if you follow the Bible, you are going to be happy to submit yourself to a sexually repressive regime that polices you and tells you, forbids you from viewing any kind of erotic imagery. Ed Algen is, quite frankly, again, just presenting this black and white worldview where there is no room for nuance or balance. And the only way you can satisfy your sexual needs, if you are a sexual person, is not just through marriage, but specifically through marriage within the Jehovah's Witness organization and through straight marriage. So you're not allowed to masturbate. You're not allowed to be gay. You're not allowed to have sex before marriage. And you're not allowed to marry someone who isn't one of Jehovah's Witnesses. There are all sorts of other rules, by the way. Thumbnail here, if Tibor is gracious that David Splane came up with not so long ago, where he gave even more rules <laughs> policing the sexuality of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's an incredibly toxic and unhealthy environment to grow up in. And I believe the damage, the, the impact that this sexual repression has on Jehovah's Witnesses cannot be overstated. I think it's it really does a lot of damage. I, I feel like it damaged me. I feel like a lot of what's gone wrong in my life is a direct result of the way this organisation has interfered with me as a sexual being. I'm just going to put it bluntly. And the solution for Ed Algin, if you are struggling with porn, if you are struggling in any way to keep lockstep with the organization's demands when it comes to sexuality, is to dip into the organization's past literature so that you can pick up specific skills and strategies to help you cope. Well, let's do that, shall we? Let's go into one of the organization's books for young people, Your Youth, Getting the Best Out of It, pages 39 and 40. Let's actually focus on one paragraph, paragraph nine. This is the sort of wisdom that Ed Algin is referring to when it comes to dipping into the spiritual food that's been supplied by the faithful slave to help Jehovah's Witnesses deal with their sexual needs. Weakly giving in to sexual desires by masturbation will certainly not give you strength when faced with a situation tempting you to commit fornication or even homosexuality. Just the opposite, it cultivates wrong thinking and wrong desire. In fact, masturbation can lead into homosexuality. In such instances, the person not satisfied with his lonely sexual activity seeks a partner for mutual sex play. <laughs> That's the wisdom. How did we take this seriously? You know, this book, Your Youth Getting the Best Out of It, I am old enough that this 
at one point was a current book for young people to read that I had to read. So I was in the audience at the convention when they first released Young People Ask. And prior to that, this red book, maybe Tibor can show an image of it uh, if he's feeling especially gracious. He's always gracious, isn't he? This little red book of horrors was my guidebook to understanding my body, my sexuality, everything to do with my relationships. And this is the sort of wisdom it contained. A paragraph telling a generation or generations of young Jehovah's Witnesses, if you masturbate, it might make you gay. <laughs> 